audience knows best, and the audience loves five NASCAR drivers you forgot about. Therefore, here I am with another five NASCAR drivers you forgot about. Enjoy, you awesome people. <laughs> Owen Kelly Owen Kelly is one of the few to make starts from the land down under of Australia. Kelly started his racing career in Formula Ford where he raced for three seasons before progressing into V8 Australian supercars in 2000. Between 12 years in supercars, however, Kelly only competed in 48 starts with only one podium finish and 21 laps led out of 3,726 Rand. By 2008, Kelly began to make strides to race in NASCAR by competing in a late model for the first time for Junior Motorsports. This was his first steps in Kelly's plans to be a NASCAR driver. In June of 2010, Kelly made his debut in NASCAR's Nationwide Series racing for Baker Curb Racing at Road America. He started 9th and would finish in 5th place during this race. In 2011, Kelly did not make an official start in NASCAR, but he did practice and qualify as a relief driver at Montreal for fellow Australian driver Marcos Ambrose, who was busy as a Cup Series driver for practice at Michigan that weekend. Marcos Ambrose would go on to win this race when he came back, so I suppose that Kelly gave the team the right information they needed to make the car perfect. Kelly would do the same in 2012 at Montreal for Kyle Busch, who would come back to start from the back and finish in 10th at Montreal. The next year, in 2013, Kelly would get a chance to race for Joe Gibbs Racing two times that season. The first time, he started second and finished in fourth place, driving the number 54 Monster Energy Toyota at Road America. His second start came at the Mid-Ohio Road Course, where he started third but only finished in 23rd. Kelly would also get the opportunity to race the number 51 car in the Cup Series in 2013 at Watkins Glen, but he would start 23rd and finish in just 24th. After this, Kelly would go without a NASCAR start until 2016 when he raced the 18 car for Joe Gibbs at Road America in Mid-Ohio again, finishing 16th and 17th in these starts. However, after those two runs, that was the last time that we have seen Owen Kelly in the world of NASCAR. <laughs> Casey Atwood. This driver at one time was poised and slated for big things in NASCAR. Many believed that he could be even the next Jeff Gordon. Looking back now though, they could not have been more wrong. Originating from Antioch, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville, Atwood became a big fan of racing at an early age and would find himself competing and succeeding at the Nashville Fairground Speedway early in his career. In 1998, Atwood would begin racing in NASCAR's Bush Series and in his first start at North Carolina Speedway, he'd finish in a modest 21st place. His next start though came at his home home track at the Nashville Fairground Speedway, and he would make history at just age 17 when he got the pole award. This is a record that will likely never be broken, as there is now an age requirement of being 18 to race in the Xfinity Series. He would go on to finish in second in this race at Nashville after leading 104 laps. In 1999, after successful part-time runs in 1998, Atwood would run full-time in the number 27 Castrol Chevrolet, and Atwood would win his very first race that season at the Milwaukee Mile at the age of 18, which was the record for the youngest winner ever until 2008 when Joey Logano would win at Kentucky Speedway after 18 years and 21 days of age in the Nationwide Series. Over the course of 10 years in the Xfinity Series ranks, Atwood would run a total of 158 races, winning only two times both in 1999. He scored 7 top 5s, 30 top 10s, and 6 pole awards. It's also worth noting that Atwood has 4 truck series starts to his name, but no stats to show for these starts. By 2001, Atwood was competing full-time in the Winston Cup Series, however his starts did not equal out to the hype he had received. During Atwood's time in the Cup Series, he only scored one top five, four top tens, one pole award, and he led for only 137 laps. His average start was 25th, and his average finish was 27th. After numerous bad finishes, this would ultimately hurt and really end his NASCAR career. By 2009, Atwood ran in 20 races in the Nationwide Series after running only four to eight races the previous years, but his average finish was 35th, and Atwood's NASCAR career was over after 2009. <laughs> <laughs> Loy Allen Jr. Hailing from Raleigh, North Carolina, Loy Allen Jr. was a stock car driver during the 1990s who saw his greatest successes coming in the ARCA series, although he never ran full-time. In 19 starts over five years, Loy Allen Jr. would score one win at Atlanta Motor Speedway, seven top fives, nine top tens, and five pole awards. While Allen saw success in ARCA in his few starts there, the same cannot be said for his Bush Series and Cup Series time. In four starts in the NASCAR Bush Series, his only stat is one top ten and an average finish of 32nd place. From 1993 to 1999, Loy Allen Jr. would compete in 48 Cup Series races where he would score just one top 10, three pole awards all in 1994 coming at Daytona, Atlanta, and Michigan, and he would lead for only 30 of 10,042 laps ran. His average finish was just 30th place in the Cup Series, and by the end of 1999, we would not see Allen competing at a high level anymore. <laughs> 
Cameron Haley. Cameron Haley grew up in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and at the age of four, he began his racing dreams by running practice laps in go-karts. By age seven, Haley would begin racing competitively in karts, finishing third in his very first event. Haley would continue to grow his racing career until 2011 when he would begin racing in the K&N West Series for Bill McAnally. Haley competed in four races that season, along with the full 2012 season, scoring seven top fives and 11 top tens in total. He was also named to the ninth class of NASCAR Next, and a class that featured drivers Ryan Blaney, Chase Elliott, Corey LaJoy, Kyle Larson, Daniel Suarez, and Dylan Kwasniewski. In 2013, Cameron Haley moved to Glen Price Motorsports where he would win the opening exhibition race to Battle at the Beach at Daytona, which was the successor to the Toyota All-Star Showdown race. Haley would then score his first points race victory at All-American Speedway in 2013. He'd go on to finish second in the K&N West point standings that season. The next year, in 2014, Haley would go east and compete in the NASCAR K&N East Series where he scored seven top fives, nine top tens, and one pull aboard, leading for 247 laps en route to another second place points finish here while racing for Turner Scott Motorsports. While having the connection to Turner Scott, Haley made his truck series debut in a number 32 Chevy Silverado at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, and he would run a total of three races with a best finish of six at New Hampshire. For 2015, Haley would sign the race for four sport racing in a number 13, where he'd go on to finish sixth in the point standings and was runner up to Eric Jones for Rookie of the Year on Haley would race again for 4Sport in 2016 and would not be given another opportunity to race in NASCAR after that season, sadly. Cameron Haley's Truck Series career would end with 49 starts, 10 top 5s, 26 top 10s, and 99 laps led. Honestly, I think Haley could have still been a great driver. It's just odd that his career just stopped after 2016. <laughs> David Rudiman. This guy was honestly one of my personal favorites, but I do feel as though most people sort of just overlooked Rudiman. David Rudiman first got his start racing on dirt in modifieds and late models, and even today, you can still find him competing at local dirt tracks. In 1997, Rudiman began racing in a NASCAR regional series where he would score three wins, 30 top fives, 59 top tens, and five pole awards in his 106 starts here. In 2002, David Rudiman would begin racing in a NASCAR Bush series, and in 2000, he would also start racing in the Truck Series. During Rudiman's Truck Series career, he competed in 79 races where he would get one win in 2005 at Bristol Motor Speedway. He'd also get a total of 17 top fives, 38 top tens, and six pull awards during his Truck Series career. During Rudiman's Bush Series and Cup Series career, he was primarily remembered for driving for Michael Waltrip Racing with sponsor Aaron's behind him. During his Bush Series career, he scored one win at Memphis in 2007, 18 top fives, 45 top tens, and three pull awards awards in 127 career starts with an average finish of 15th place. Then in 2007, David Rudman would begin racing full-time for Michael Waltrip Racing in a double zero car, but the first year had its fair share of crashes and his average finish in 2007 was 30th place. In 2008, he drove the first five races with errands in a double zero car, but after Bristol, he switched rides to the number 44 car with sponsor UPS after veteran driver Dale Jarrett retired while Michael McDowell drove the double zero the rest of the year. In 2009, the 44 car was gone and Rudiman was back in the double zero car. 2009 would be a good year for David. He scored two pole awards, 10 top 10s, five top fives, and he got his first victory due to rain stopping the 2009 Coke 600. While many would criticize this victory because of how he won, he would get a chance to redeem himself in 2010 when he not only won, but put on a dominating performance when he won at Chicagoland that year. He would also score six top fives and nine top 10s that season. Things were looking great and he signed a three year extension of Michael Waltrip Racing in 2010, but sadly 2011 was not a good season. One top five and only three top tens and a 28th place points finish resulted in the team not being able to come to an agreement with Aaron's for further sponsorship before Rudiman, only Michael Waltrip, and thus the two parties actually parted ways after 2011. In 2012, Rudiman attempted starts with multiple teams including Stuart Haas Racing and Tommy Baldwin Racing in a number 10 car when Danica Patrick was not making starts as she was part-time. Rudiman would also make starts with B K Racing in the number 93 Burger King Toyota, along with one start in the number 51 car when Kurt Busch had a one-race suspension for actions detrimental to the sport. In 2013, Rudiman would replace Landon Castle in BK Racing's number 83 car, but if I can be honest, racing for BK Racing, 
I can't say anything could really be expected from him that season. In 2014, Rudiman would only start in three of the six races he attempted in Front Row Motorsports number 35 car, and sadly after that, David Rudiman's NASCAR career was done. As I mentioned earlier, you can still occasionally find David Rudiman competing in dirt track races across America. And that concludes another list of five NASCAR drivers you forgot about. What did you think? Did you have any thoughts on these five, or do you know more drivers that should be added to this list? Go ahead and drop a comment down below and let me know. Also, I invite you to please give the video a like, it really helps my channel a lot. And if this is your first time hearing in my channel, or if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you never miss another video. I'm Danny B, and thank you so much for watching my video, and I hope you have a great day. Bye guys.